Hey friends, this is Laura with Laura B. Floss 2. Welcome or welcome back. This is the last video I will be filming for block assembly for our Bloom Quilt Sew Along. I'm so excited about this. We are on block 19 and 20, so we have one through 18 completed, only two blocks to go. This has been such an amazing journey to share with you, and I'm so glad that you have come along for the ride. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right in and get sewing. I do already have all my pieces laid out and matched up on my design boards. So we have two flowers left to do for block 19 and 20 to finish the inside part of our quilt top. If you've been following along, you know that I am using a Juki DX7. I like to use a uh, the acrylic foot that came with the machine that has a cute little triangle in the middle that helps me know where that needle's gonna hit when it goes down onto my line. And I crank down my stitch length to 1.8 in order to make sure I have a really tight little stitch to go around these shapes. So like I said just a few minutes ago, I do have all of my shapes matched up with the respective fabrics for my block, and I'm just going to get stitching. Um, you know, I've given you some tips along the way on circles. You can refer back to those videos. Um, you can definitely go to block, oh, I don't know, let's see, probably block five and um, six for sure, and maybe even block 11 or um nine and ten so make sure you refer back to those videos for some more tips about circles basically it's just a matter of getting the pressure right and getting your speed right and that smaller stitch length is definitely going to help you get that smooth finish around those circles and we have quite a few of them to do for this block so without um, saying any more about that i'm just going to stitch these up and throw on some music for you So now we're going to start on block 20. This is the last block of the quilt. This is so exciting. to cut them out and flip them out, and then we'll be able to start assembling our blocks. Okay, I'm gonna swing you on down here so you can see the trimming and flipping of these shapes. We have a bunch of circles to do. Those are pretty easy to cut out. Just keep your approximate quarter inch as you're cutting around that circle. Looks like I have about eight more of those to go. For this block, we also have four um, leaf shapes. So as we have done before, you're going to angle those points and then go out to your quarter inch and then angle back in just to take some of that bulk of fabric out of that point. That way when you go to turn it, it's gonna be a lot um, easier to get a point on the ends and it will give you a, a better result. All right, there's block 19 and so now we'll do the same for block 20. Now block 20, we have eight little petals that go around a center um, oval. 
and the points on those do not show. So I could go ahead and cut that point off of those shapes and make them a little easier to turn. I think I'm going to try it both ways and see which uh, works better for me. And that's what I would encourage you to do as well. If you have shapes that you know a portion is not going to show, if you think you can get a shortcut out of it and just, you know, snip the tip and flip it a little easier, then I would um, encourage you to try it on one before you commit to all, right? And try both ways and see which one you think works best for you. Um, and just because it works better one way for me does not mean it's going to work best that way for you. So just do what works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out one of these real quick. Actually, I guess I'll cut out two. And this one I'm going to trim as normal. Now on these shapes, you know, it doesn't really matter that much if your um, tip is real pointy because you're not going to see it. So don't, um, you can still angle it in like you normally would, um, but don't think that you need to, um, you know, go in on that point and get those points perfect because you're probably not going to need to. Now, I think that I can already tell that with this shape, just because of the way it is, it's not going to give me any advantage whatsoever to snip the tip and try to flip it. So I'm just going to cut them out as I normally would um, around that point all the way around and not worry about that end being snipped. I'm sorry I keep going out of camera. I keep um, going over my little trash bucket there instead of my board. And then realizing that you can't see that. <laughs> okay, so let's cut our slits and um, start turning out some shapes. I am going to go back to block 19 just because, I don't know, that's just how I am. Just cutting the slits in these circles. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the slits and all the shapes for this block before I start turning them. Now in those smaller circles, remember, if it helps you to cut more than just that single slit, you can cut across a little bit. Just give yourself a little more wiggle room for turning. You don't have to do that. Again, that kind of comes with a little practice to figure out where it works best for you. Start on these larger circles because they're a little easier. And this is just the rough turn. I'll go back with the two-point turner after I get them roughly flipped out. You see how I'm avoiding those little circles? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to do the leaves too. <laughs> uh, when I get these good and smooth, I like to go once both ways. Um, so I go once like to the right. And go all the way around that circle. And then I'll go back around to the left. Doesn't really matter if you go left or right first, <laughs> but just make sure you go both ways. If you still, if you're um, struggling with those circles really smooth, that might help you. Obviously your stitching line comes into play with that. And that smaller stitch length will help with the smoothness of your circle too. And, you know, if you're, um, if you've tried 1.8 or, you know, a comparable stitch length on your machine and it's still not quite where you want it, you can obviously decrease that down a little bit. One end of this shape will be 
underneath that middle circle on the block. So if you happen to poke through one end, just be careful not to do the other end. <laughs> I poked through on my first one a little bit there. That's why I bring that up. Nope, oh, poked through there too. Careful on this end. Tuck the end that I poked through underneath that middle circle and you won't be able to tell in the finished quilt. That circle's a little wonky. Fabric will stretch, so if you have a little a circle that's a little off, just kind of you know work that area back and forth a little bit, and that fabric you know the fibers will stretch a little bit to give you um, a little bit of a smoother shape. All right, there is the first of the two blocks today. Now let's work on the second one. This is the last block of the quilt, block 20. So we're going to make all of our slits. Now I'm going to warn you, those eight little um, pieces there, those are not going to be the easiest of shapes that we've turned. In fact, I would probably just tell you to go ahead and Cut your X's in those um, just so you have a little more wiggle room. Sometimes I don't do an X, sometimes I do like a T. Um, but just make sure you have enough of an opening on those that you can get them turned. And again, I'm just going to kind of roughly turn these out and then I'll come back with the turn it all tool and shape them. But this is the one that I cut the tip off of and it really wasn't that much easier to turn than the other one. But again, if you want to try that with one of yours, go ahead. They're definitely smaller and, and a little more difficult to turn out. Kind of hard to see me turning these because they're so small. I can't really figure out where I could, how I can help you out there. But just kind of poking my thumb through the back side of the shape and working it around my fingers to get those turned out. Ah, moving on to bigger shapes. Those are better. All right, now it's time to smooth all these little babies out.
I'm getting excited about getting this quilt top together. It's going to be pretty cute. Still haven't picked my outer border fabric. Gotta do that. Now with the sewing long guide, this last flower, you have two different colors. So obviously you're going to alternate the petal colors around the center oval. So you just want to keep that in mind. I did have a patterned fabric for one of mine or a directional pattern fabric for one of mine. Um, and you may have caught me trying to think about whether or not I wanted to try to lay those out strategically or just um, randomly on the cloth. I decided to go ahead and just do random because I didn't really have um, enough space to get them laid out strategically the way I wanted. But that's okay. I think it's going to still be very cute. We are almost ready to head over to the ironing board so we can press out our shapes and lay out our blocks. Exciting, exciting times. Okay, with that being said, let's go press and lay out our blocks. All right, so this this is block 19 and it has um, both a cross and an X for directions for the fabrics for this. So I'm going to help myself laying it out by just folding this background fabric the same way as the lines I'm going to need. So here I folded it into eighths and I'm just going to press these up. And then when I unfold this, I will have all the lines I need to lay out my um, flower. So I'm going to move this to the side a little bit so I don't accidentally press over those lines and lose them. And then we're going to press these shapes. Just give them a nice little press so they're nice and... Not completely flat, but you know, just kind of a finishing press there. Now, if you're like me, you may have had a couple of these little leaf shapes that you poke through the point, so kind of keep that in mind. I have these two right here, so they need to go to the center. And the first thing we're going to do is lay down our stems. Now, our stems actually are for um, the X. So to keep those centered, we want to press our, or maybe just pinch. We'll just pinch that stem in half and lay that right on the center here. Same thing with the other one. We are going to use our Quilter Select Free Fuse to get that in place. And let's see. I was thinking about just doing half, but I guess I'll go ahead and do all of it. Hope for the best. Now you don't want to rub this back and forth because you don't want those stems to accidentally move on you. All right, that 
should be good. Now the leaves go on the 12, 3, 6, and 9 position. So I'm going to go ahead and get those in there. And you want to check your um, measurement on this and make sure that you don't have these too far out or too far in. I think this will probably be good because we also want to make sure that this little circle covers all of those points in the middle. So I'm going to grab my ruler here. That looks pretty good. I think this one could be moved in just a smidge. Go ahead and get these fused. Now I used those lines on my background to line up my points for my leaves, so that was easy work. Now we're only going to do one layer of these at a time because we do not want to try to press through multiple layers with that because uh, we want to make sure our free fuse is um, really good. All right, so we do want to check the measurements on this as well. Get that center point right on the four and the quarter mark both ways. see that this one needs to move up a smidge. Now you could press these circles in half and then line them up on that diagonal mark. That would be another way to make sure your measurements are all really good. Do those circles one at a time, they're too far apart. <laughs> All right, now it's time. Now, and again, you can measure this out so it's perfectly precise. Um, I'm not going to, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. Now this center one, it's, you know, it's not gonna allow me to um, lift up that circle when I'm applicating but I'll show you a trick for that when we're sewing them down. And I'm actually gonna lift this up and before I do that center circle, just notice that it is kind of a directional, it's a, it's a plaid print and I do want that a certain way. I think I want this to go like that instead of straight crossed. I 
after this last shape is fused down, we'll be ready to move on to the last block. All right, so here's block 19, and it can go hang out on the sewing table. This flower is in the center of the block, so I'll just iron the one way so I have the place for my stem in the middle. Put this up there. Okay, now this is the center. Just slipping those points underneath there. I may have to adjust them once I get this last little petal in. Looks like I will. Get all those little guys spaced out as best I can. That looks pretty good. Okay. I am going to put a little pre-fuse right there in the center. Now, none of my petals have free fuse under them yet, but they will have here in a moment. I only put the free fuse underneath the center of that oval, so it won't um, matter for my little petals. Now I'm just going to very carefully flip up the outside part of those little petals, sprinkle a little free fuse under there, trying not to move their placement. That can get a little tricky at times. You may have noticed I didn't use my ruler to see where I was at um, for the top of that flower just because I can adjust where my leaves are for that stem and just make my stem a little shorter if I went too high. Um, so we'll check that before we put our leaves on. The whole quilt that I've um, been doing this time, I've been trying to have about three quarters of an inch at least at the top of my block, on the you know above the flower, and I give you a half inch seam allowance. 
So that's just kind of what I'm checking right there is if that's at three quarters of an inch. Where does that leave my leaves? That leaves them right about there and that looks good. Okay, so now our blocks are laid out, fused down. We will be able to go and applique down our shapes. Okay, so here we are back at the machine. Um, just as we've been doing for the entire quilt, I am using a dark brown thread. I know sometimes it shows up black, but it's a dark brown thread to go around all of the shapes, no matter what color they are. Um, this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna just like go down the stems lift these up, make my turns, and then come back and catch these red petals um, to go around all of the center stuff. And then I'll do the center, and then I'll do this, the pink circles, and then the purple circles working my way out. Just like we've discussed in previous videos, if you have the option to work your way out, you'll have less chance of getting any wrinkles and bulk in the inside of your shapes. So I am just going to get sewing and turn some music on for you. Oh, the zigzag that I'm using is uh, 1.8 in width and 0.9 in length. I know that question comes up every time, so just address it. Okay, so I have some strings to trim off and then we will be able to press these and then trim them up and add them to the design wall to see what our finished quilt top is going to look like. Just a reminder, I like pressing these from the back just because it won't smush your shapes as much. I have a couple layers of Insulbrite underneath my ironing board cover. I, I do run my iron across these just to kind of relate, relax those fibers and get them to go, you know, as flat as possible. I have best press in my in my mister. Funny story about the best press. I press my husband's shirts each week. He wears really nice shirts for work and when we go out and such. And and um, Christmas, I sent him a link. And I was like, hey, look, Joanne's has Best Press gallons on sale. That would be an excellent Christmas present. <laughs> I'm tired of buying the little bottles. He got one for me. I was telling one of his friends, and they're like, you seriously got her a gallon of Best Press? I said, yep, he got me the iron I wanted to. So <laughs> we're happy. I couldn't believe he had the... Um, the guts to get me something like that for Christmas, but I was so happy. I'd send him links to both of the items. All right, let's go trim these up. All right, so here's block 19. Just 
just lining out those lining up those outer edges at the three quarters mark or close to oops Here's block 20. All right, let's get these on the design wall so we can see what it's going to look like. All right, so here it is. All 20 blocks for our bloom quilt stitch along have been completed. Here in the lower right-hand corner are blocks 19 and 20 that we just finished on the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that fourth row sewn together and get that row sewn on to the first, or the fifth row, I guess. Get the fifth row sewn together and get that last row sewn on to the rest of the quilt top and pick out my border fabric. So I will be doing one or two final, um, maybe even three final videos about this quilt along. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing one about the borders on just how to get that measured and how to make sure those are right. And then I'll probably do another one when I go to quilt it and possibly a separate video on binding and a sleeve. Um, so look forward to those, I hope. Thank you so much for sewing along with me. Thanks so much for liking and subscribing the videos. I really appreciate your interaction. I love your comments. love reading the questions and comments um, on each video, and I appreciate those that have reached out to me on Instagram and just uh, provided some encouragement to keep going with this quilt along. So until next time, happy stitching.